So my first question, right? And I've written it down. It says, what is the story with AIs now, aromatase inhibitors, right? I see many guys in the TRT community saying that AIs should be avoided unless absolutely necessary due to estrogen being required and low estrogen being potentially just as bad as low testosterone. So what exactly is the deal here? What is the story? We hear different stories from everyone out there. You know, what's the right approach with AIs? Yeah. Well, first, thanks for coming on our, yeah. our, our, our podcast, uh, Paolo. Um, but AIs is a very hot topic these days. Yeah. And I have always been one with the TRT to think that um, you know, the patient should decide, the client should decide what um, type of treatment they'd like to have. But with AIs, um, lots of times in the past, people were just put on AIs and they don't always help, and sometimes they do help. And what they don't help with is uh, the fear that if you get too much of a lowering of the estradiol, you may get bone loss, um, you may have issues with uh, dry out, dried out joints. What um, about things like um, mood swings and, and like so, low confidence? That? Is that related or is so that more testosterone? The, the, the idea is the late Dr. Chrysler would talk about the effects of testosterone itself. So when you do TRT, the testosterone itself will uh, ablate some of the effects of estradiol, but there are different factors. Some people will have high amounts of body fat mm -hmm. and the aromatase further. There's some people that will come in and have um, a very high estradiol and have low testosterone levels. And so the ratio is off. So uh, let me interject quickly. You say, um, well, aromatase, right? Well, explain that to people what that means. Is that when uh, testosterone gets converted into estrogen or what exactly so is So there are um, enzymes called aromatase mm -hmm. and they're present in different tissues of the body, uh, particularly in, in the abdominal fat in, in men. So as we get older, we get the spread, you're going to get more estradiol conversion. But also it's been found that some types of insulin resistance might lead you to having more of these side effects related to, to high estrogen. So you're going to be more susceptible to that. The aromatase enzyme, for any given amount of testosterone that you have, some people have more of this aromatase enzyme, a more active enzyme, and convert more of their natural testosterone into estradiol. Okay. Um, and then they end up getting some side effects. And it's usually the sudden change in, in, um, in, in estrogen where they get the side effects. Even certain babies, newborn babies, might get early stages of gyno for the first few days in the womb because they also receive some estro estrogen, estradiol from their mothers. Yeah. And then that, that tends to go away. Or during adolescence, uh, some young boys or teenagers get some gynecomastia, which then eventually goes away as the hormones adjust, but it's the sudden influx of testosterone converting to estradiol that causes these issues. And it's the same with men that start TRT. They'll initially get some of this um, lumps or gyno uh, type issues with, within their breasts. And no man wants to see the feminization of their breasts. And so there's a big fear and you would reach for uh, an aromatase inhibitor to usually stop that. And I think this is why people are so quick to jump on the, on the AIs. You always see, oh, you've got to have an AI because they're, they're overly worried about the, the estrogen conversion. Yeah. They think if they don't take one, they're going to get man boobs or sensitive nipples and that type of stuff. But from what I've seen, at least in the, lit the literature is that um, you should prescribe these things based on the need for them, you know, like for, start with a basic treatment. I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong yet. And if you see, high, you know, really elevated levels of estrogen after you've started t TRT or something like that, then maybe there's a case there for an I, AI. I, I think the doctors tend to say if there's side effects, if there, there are issues, yes. estrogen related issues first, because we've seen some men with a relatively high amount of estradiol and they have no side effects or issues of estrogen whatsoever, mm -hmm. uh, no bloatiness, uh, no, no kind of... Well, that's me, for example. Yeah. I have fairly uh, high levels of estrogen, but I don't have any of the side effects related to it, so we've seen no need to have an AI in my case. No, and I, yeah. I actually recently have stopped using an AI. Yeah, okay. uh, with all the talk about don't use an AI, I've, I've given it a go and stopped. Now, there's a combination of reasons for that. Um, one, I just wanted to see, and, I, and I've gone without an AI in the past. Now, for the, the, the most of my, uh, let's call it my TRT career, the time I've been on TRT, I, I had used an AI from the very beginning because when I first started treatment, I was on um, no AI. I was on a testosterone uh, and anthelocypionate and, and with a little bit of B12, no AI. Did it for 20 weeks. The doctor was injecting every two weeks the old fashioned way and no AI was used. And, yeah. th and then when I started on creams, high concentration creams to the scrotum, um, at first there was no AI used. And then on, on the blood test, I was getting very weak erections and I had a really elevated estradiol level and then a very much elevated prolactin level. Uh. 
And so when they sent me to an endocrinologist, they said, well, actually, the estradiol is make, has having an effect in raising your prolactin level. So the, the endocrinologist had me on a milligram, uh, I think, a day to every other day of, of an astrozole, which is quite a high dose compared yeah. to what we use now. I was younger. It didn't bother me. When yeah, I that's, started, a, that's, that's an AI? Uh, yeah, it was an, an astrozole was the AI. Run okay, yeah, yeah. Limiter, and yeah. Uh, the acne had gone away, and a bit of acne on my back. Again, I was, I was young, I was 20, 22, 20, yeah, 23 at the time. The acne had gone away, um, but I just stayed on it for, for years and years. And then there was one time, I'd say probably about seven years ago, I, I stopped. But then the dosage had changed. So there's a, yeah. there's a whole, I'd always use my AI, and, and like many people did. Um, but uh, you know, the more I, I, I've looked into it, if you don't need to have an AI, yeah. then you don't need to have an AI. Do, uh, do, do you not think this, this sort of paranoia about absolutely requiring an AI comes from the bodybuilding scene? Because they inject so much more testosterone that you normally would on TRT, that naturally they're gonna have much higher elevated or, or, or aromatization into estrogen, and maybe they, that's why when people are looking online, do you need an AI? They're getting all the advice from bodybuilders rather than TRT. I, I think partially, but there's also been some papers put out in Life Extension that talk about okay. uh, how keeping estradiol as lower is better. Um, I know that um, Dr. Rousier would say, well, you know, observation doesn't mean causation yeah. necessarily. But we have seen that some people, you know, including myself, are short course ideally of, of an AI to things get stable for some people in rare cases may help um, also it's, it's a matter of a, you know, the dose being the right optimal dose for someone either small more frequent doses or you know once a week with a smaller amount yeah um, and, and sosanon works just fine for that any testosterone more or less is going to aromatize yeah um, not to get off track but I mean part of the equation is how much substrate how much testosterone do you have in the mix will also determine along with the enzymes activity how much estradiol that you'll have yeah so the, the, they're all very important factors, but if you can go without it, that, that's, yeah, that's better. But if you can't, you know, the door shouldn't be closed on you. Yeah. There should always be options on the table, preferably short term courses of, of AI until things kind of stabilize. So, but so, it's not my call, it's, it's yeah. the doctor's call. And, and, and that's just my personal opinion. I, I think personally being off in AI for two months, um, I didn't notice any negative effects really being on it other than a bit of drier joints and some, some shoulder pain. But, you know, off it, I, I feel quite, quite good. That's good, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the um, keep things simple, you know, just yeah. I like the set and forget. And if you experience any, and this is just anecdotal, but if you experience any um, side effects or, you know, you're not feeling great, then maybe investigate you know, rather than, you know, all this tweaking constantly. Yeah. Like. But the question I had for you, I wanted to ask you was, let's say a new uh, client comes to the clinic, right? And uh, they're interested in TRT and that, you know, on average, what is the likelihood that they get prescribed an AI? Because I think everyone out there expects to get an AI with a TRT. And I, I know it, it obviously depends on what the doctor says, but just based you know, from experience and uh, anecdotally, all the patients you've worked with, what's sort of the, the percentage of guys that usually get an AI, if you could I, say? I, can you say off the top or is it hard? I, I can't say off the top of my head yeah. because every patient's different, but it depends on what the patient's starting each star levels are, okay. which is a good predictor. And, and usually, if they're even given an AI these days, it's going to be a very short course until things stabilize, until yeah. it brings it down. You know, there are some treatments that require an AI as a monotherapy. Yeah, I've seen that. And, and they do, do show effective. And the thing is, you're not crashing anyone's estrogen then, because the, the, the testes on their own, when they're functioning, make about 15% of your estradiol level. Mm. Um, and, the, and the peer reviewed studies show that it, it doesn't even affect your bone density statistically. Um, you know, when it's used as a monotherapy, but not everyone stays on that monotherapy long term. And that monotherapy is used to kind of lower the SHGB, raise the uh, the total testosterone level, raise the free testosterone level. And the estradiol, whilst it goes down a little bit, it actually, because you get extra testosterone, it, it's kind of hard to, for it to catch up. So it'll keep increasing the estradiol level, especially when the testes are active. Yeah. You take someone that's taking exogenous testosterone, the testes might not be active unless you're using HCG and then you, you can actually get the estrogen too low. So, I mean, what percentage? It just, it just depends on, on the patient. I, I, I don't, you know, we've got different doctors. We just met one doctor now. Yeah. And the different doctors all have the different treatment regimen. And that is listen to the patient, look at their needs, and then if they can avoid using an AI okay. by starting with a low dose, start low, go slow, 
of testosterone, yeah. then then they, they might not need it at all. And if they're makes sense. Complaints, yeah, it makes sense. You know, maybe a very very short term to get them under control. Yeah. But what what are the complaints? It's usually my 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 nipples are sensitive, or my nipples look a bit pointy, or my my areola looks a bit large, or I've got a you know I've got a lump, and that might that could be something else. Uh, slightly unrelated, but how quick do those effects take place? These estrogenic effects, like you say, the the uh, larger nipples and things like that. How soon do people see these things? Because I've never experienced this. I don't know yeah, how to relate there, to it. There are some again. It's that fear of men having a feminized breast. Yeah, we had a younger. Uh, client, the doctor's patient that came to us, and he was so worried that he had uh, had got gyno from just starting you know, three weeks into treatment. He said, "My nipples feel a bit funny; they don't feel right." I said, "Well, you know, we can move your six week, four, five week blood test a bit earlier to about week four. And he went to get his blood test done. He was so convinced that he had had this gyno, and we looked at his levels of estradiol, and it's eighty. Yeah. So really, on, on, you want to be un, under 100, 120, 130, even 150 is fine because the tests that we use, while sensitive, they're not the high sensitive LC mass spec ones. So normally they overestimate the estradiol. So yeah. if he came in at 80, it's probably a lot lower. Don't yeah. know exactly how much lower, but it was probably less than 80, which is, is fine. So what I think I've seen in the liter literature is testosterone itself can, can interact with the, with the nipples and, and the breasts a bit. Um, or it can be prolactin, and another fact is his prolactin was fine as well. So there's a there's this feeling of something when you've got this change in the hormones. Is testosterone, the androgen itself, may may cause that effect. What, what about overweight men? Like, let's say you've got a bit of extra body fat, and for maybe your, your uh, breast, your tits start to hang a little bit, you know, and they look like maybe it's gyne, and I do not find that maybe people it's in their heads they're getting paranoid that maybe it's just a bit of extra weight. Yeah, it could be just fat. Now some of the fat that goes on could be due to that aromatase enzyme holding more of the aromatase enzyme in the. And the idea there is to, you know, for them, if you can shift the body fat, lower the body fat, you'll have less aromatase now. Mm. I mean, personally, for me, the reason why I don't think I need uh, an, an aromatase inhibitor now is my body fat's not quite low. And, you know, I was also started on thyroid treatment. Yeah. So I actually, I lost a lot of, I was lost lots of body weight and body fat. I was 111 kilos, and now I'm about 104 kilos, right, right. you know. Uh, and so with less body fat is less, means I'm going to probably have less aromatization. So, you know, for me, you need less. So if they can shift their weight, they get less estrogen, they might have less effect of, of gyno. And I've also made it up in my mind that, you know, if I were to get gyno, then sod it, I'm getting surgery. Yeah. You know, and let's see how far I can take this. And if I, if I need to have surgery, then I'll have it. And you don't have to worry about it because so often these are your gauge for, uh, is estrogen too high? Is estrogen too low? I mean, this is what men are using to judge. And in reality, it, it might not be that. It might yeah. not be the estradiol at all. Yeah. Is, is this something that guys should worry about in general? Do you think there's just a bit too much paranoia about it and they should rather just have peace of mind and if it happens, it happens? That type of approach or, or is it common? I think, it's, it common? Individual. I think okay. it's a, it depends on the individual. Some you know, men that are coming to TRT have lots of anxiety anyway. Yeah. And, and then sometimes, I mean, I can say subjectively, yeah, true, yeah. we would joke, you know, oh, you're a little bit um, off today or you're a bit hot headed today. It must be your Easter dial levels <laughs> up. And, um, and I, I do find a bit of a numbing effect from, from the AI as far as the, the mood. So oh, okay. if I get really hot tempered and you know, get some road rage behind the wheel, you know, it, it may be possibly due to the interaction between the elevated androgens and the estrogens at the same time, yeah. possibly. But coming off the AI, I did notice a little bit of that initially, but I felt a little bit freer to speak my mind. I don't know why, but a few times I was just kind of out there, then it just kind of leveled off and calmed down. Now, that being said, you know, I'm also prescribed Tadalafil, and Tadalafil can act as a, a, a block of aromatase in, in, in a different, in a different well, way. What is that? Uh, Tadalafil is uh, Cialis. Oh, okay. So if you're using uh, other substances, PDE5 inhibitors, they can actually lower the amount of estradiol uh, in the blood, or at least the production or the output of the aromatase enzyme. Okay. So it's, it's interesting, that's been, that's been proven in the paper. How much does it do it in, com in comparison to an aromatase inhibitor? I'm not sure. Yeah. But you know, there's other men that will take over-the-counter supplements like DIM to help lower the metabolism of the estrogen out, out of the body. And some people report feeling better sexual improvements with DIM as well as, uh, as the testosterone. So, you know, does one go completely without any sort of estrogen management? I think, again, it's, it's individual depending on the patient, the doctor. Um, we don't advocate for one thing over the other. I think everything should be on the table for everyone. And, and we don't want to be dogmatic and say, no, you only do it this way and that's the only way. Because I think that's wrong. I, I think, yeah. you, you know, from a scientific point of view, you should look at everything. And, 
and you know I, the way I like to approach things is you work with the best you, you work the best you can with the information that you have and if new research comes out or new studies come out that contradict that then you just adapt you know you say okay maybe we were wrong on this and we, we're changing or oh look we were right you know th this confirms that I think you just have yeah. to be open-minded like you said not strict and regimented and no, you know it's our way or the highway type thing it's, it's a very personal thing if someone if they want to decide and, and you know the, the, the evidence it, 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 it's hard to know but if, if a patient is adamant and they want to be on their AI then it's not up to balance the hormones to tell them yes or no. It's, yeah. it's their discussion with the, the doctor provider uh, within within a, a group, and, and and they'll make that decision together. Okay. Well, I'm sure I'm going to have uh, more questions on AIs in the future because I know okay. when I first started uh, the TRT journey and investigating that, it was one of the hardest things for me to understand. I don't know why it's it's, it's fairly simple now, but I think it's just you know with when you're bombarded with all these different medications that you can take on top of the testosterone. You can, it kind of all blurs together. So I like, I like to try to just clarify everything. Yeah. And well, you look, the body is meant to take a certain amount of testosterone in, convert a certain amount of estradiol, which it has its benefit, a certain amount of dihydrotestosterone, which is also an active metabolite, and, and they all have functions in the body. If you, yeah. you, know, if you lower the estradiol too, too much, you're not going to have sexual improvements. You're not going to feel good. Um, so it does have an effect on, on mood and energy and metabolism and the endothelium of your, of your vessels to protect you from heart disease. So there are benefits to having, having that. So, um, I, 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 typically, I prefer the, the simpler solutions. But when it comes to hormones and your health and that, we know it's not that simple. You know, everybody's, no. everybody's body is unique and different and works differently. And you, you have to uh, judge it and, and work with it on an individual basis. Yeah. So I don't think it's a one size fits, it, yeah. fits at, at all. And, and people need to realize there are many options. And I think we keep all options on the table. Good.